Thank you for attending today as we continue to search for 34-year-old Victoria Taylor. So you still haven't found Victoria? It's been almost 10 days. Extensive searches by officers and drones have already been carried out, including the use of divers and specialist sonar equipment. Are you sure that she's really there? This is going to be interesting to listen to. Who is known locally as Vix. She's still missing from her home in the Norton area of Moulton. I'm here today to provide an update to the local community on the police response to finding Victoria. But firstly, I want to acknowledge the unimaginable level of distress that Victoria's family are going through following her disappearance nine days ago. We have put specialist officers in place to link in directly with the family and provide them with support and keep them updated with our strategy and any developments. Guys, for those of you that are new to this story, Victoria Taylor is 34 years old and she is from Moulton, North Yorkshire. She has a two-year-old daughter at home waiting for her and she also has a fiancé called Matthew. The family are supportive of the police response and we are working together in our efforts to find Victoria. Victoria left her home at 9am on Monday the 30th of September. She was then seen on CCTV at 11.35am at the BP garage on Wellham Road. Here's a picture guys of Victoria Taylor at that BP garage that she's talking about. Now I do find it strange how she's wearing a cap. She could be just wearing a cap because it's raining outside. But it does look a bit strange. It's almost like she's wearing it to try and cover herself a bit. You know, to try and hide her identity. That's in Norton. She's then purchased several items. Surely you could mention what a few of these items were. Especially considering that when we look at the news reports, they only state that she bought a drink, a single drink from that shop. And we've further confirmed a sighting of Victoria, which was captured at 11.53am on the Monday at Moulton bus station, which is on Railway Street. Victoria is seen to be carrying a bag, which we believe contain the items that were purchased at the BP garage. Additional witness evidence supports the fact that, we, that Victoria did not enter the station and we have no reason to believe that she's used transport at that time, public transport. In the last 24 hours, we've also recovered further CCTV footage, which shows Victoria walking towards the play park on Riverside Walk. This was at 12.30 p.m. Various items that belong to Victoria have been recovered from this location. Again, you're being so vague. You're not even telling us what items were recovered. Now surely you're making this press statement because you want help from the public. The only way we can help you is if you give us more details. Since receiving the initial report of Victoria going missing, we've made every effort to find her. Have you? Have you really tried your best to try and find this mother of a two-year-old? You see, from what I've read and seen, you've put all your efforts into that river. So how can you really say that you've made every effort to try and find Victoria? Maybe you should call Peter Folding. He seemed to do a better job than Lancashire Police when Nicola Bully went missing. Previous releases of information made by North Yorkshire Police highlight the scale of inquiries undertaken to date. And I would like to reiterate that based on the current information, no indication of any form of third party involvement has been established and we're still treating this as a missing person inquiry. This is like deja vu of the Nicola Bully case. Have you guys not learnt anything yet? Again, you're not keeping an open mind whether a third party was involved in this case, which is completely ridiculous. How can you stick to a single hypothesis that she must be in the water? Just because someone's belongings are found near the river, that doesn't mean that they're in the river. It could be a decoy. Let's listen to Peter Folding when he was talking about this type of situation regarding the Nicola Bully case. I've worked on cases where there was a shoe left on the river and it was left as a decoy. We don't know if this has been left by a third party or Nicola as a decoy to drag all the resources down to the river's edge. And I'd be looking at that very clearly, um, how it's got there in the first place. As with any investigation, we are very open-minded and will continue to explore all lines of inquiry. So you're going to keep an open mind, but you're not going to keep an open mind whether there's a third party involved. You see, this is the problem. You're contradicting yourself already. Anything could have happened to Victoria and yet you just believe that she entered the water. Now, why would a woman who's got a two-year-old child at home and is about to be married soon enter the water on her own accord? 
Based on the discovery of Victoria's belongings so close to the water's edge, we must accept the significant possibility that Victoria has entered the River Derwent. So because you found her belongings next to the river, we need to believe that she must have entered the water. Now looking at the previous cases, like what Peter Folding was just talking about, people leave the possessions near the river's edge as a decoy. Now you should just be keeping an open mind whether it was left there as a decoy or not. You see, you should be investigating how those things got there in the first place, instead of just assuming that Victoria entered the water. For those of you that followed me since the Nicola Bully case, I can't actually believe that this whole thing is happening all over again. They just haven't learnt nothing, guys. Searches are currently underway, um, taking place in the river, and those searches have been taking place above and below the water surface. Now I'm really happy that you're searching that river, in case she really is in that river, but you haven't mentioned once that you're searching for her on land anywhere. You see, this is the problem. If she is in some garage somewhere or in some hidden place somewhere, you're not going to find her because you're too busy just looking in that river. You need to spread your resources. Guys, I thought Lancashire police were bad in regards to the Nicola Bully case, but these guys don't seem any better. You see, once Nicola Bully's body was found, I continued to make videos on missing people cases. And unfortunately, almost every single one of these cases ended in a tragic ending where the person's body was found in the river. Now, every single time the police have reported all of these deaths as not suspicious, they've never been suspicious about any of them. It got to the point where there were so many bodies being found in the river that I couldn't even keep up. Now surely something is not right here. The team are using specialist sonar equipment which gives officers a, be a view below the surface. This search is slow and complex and the team are working methodically in very difficult conditions. The use of this specialist resource will continue in the coming days and we are very much supported by this work from, on a national level by police and advisors. Additional specialist police search officers are using drones to scour the rural close, rural areas close to where Victoria's possessions were also found. So you've got a couple of drones searching in the rural areas and you've also got people searching in the river. But you haven't mentioned anything about looking through loads of CCTV or looking for more witnesses to find out what actually really happened to Victoria. It sounds like you're taking a narrow-minded approach in this investigation. There are obviously killers on the loose out there and you guys are not investigating them properly. Otherwise, there would not be bodies being found in the rivers day in, day out, up and down the country. Over the coming days, we will continue our search to find Victoria and ensure that we are doing all that we can to support the family. Understandably, the disappearance of Victoria has shocked the local community. I bet it has shocked them and you should be shocked too because a woman with a two-year-old child at home and a fiancé would not enter that water on her own accord. I mean, what's going to be next? Are you going to say that she had alcohol problems or that she was going through perimenopause, like what they said in the Nicola Bully case? And the family take comfort in the overwhelming amount of support from people both locally and further afield. We have seen a small amount of misinformation and speculation which is not helpful and is causing unnecessary anguish to Victoria's family at this time. Victoria's family have made it clear on various social media platforms following the sharing of this inaccurate information that their wish is to work only with North Yorkshire Police in our efforts to locate Victoria. And they have asked that I take this opportunity to reiterate their position. Well, I'm glad that you've reiterated that because in the Nicola Bully case, they weren't too happy about people on social media getting involved then either, were they? Now, although there might be a few people that are putting out misinformation out there, generally, people on social media seem to be doing a better job than people like you guys. Call them what you will, armchair detectives, cyber sleuths, but at least they keep an open mind. At least they look at every avenue of what possibly could have happened to the person, not like you guys, with your single hypothesis and narrow-minded narratives. 
And finally, we have taken advice on a national level to ensure that we are doing all that we can to achieve the best possible outcome for Victoria and her family. And as Head of Local Policing for North Yorkshire Police, I have every confidence in our ongoing response to the missing person search for Victoria.